Welcome back, everybody. My name is Tucker, and of course, today we're talking once again about some James Harden trade stuff. Now, this is going to be the last Harden trade video. This is the last thing where I want to take a look at it from because a lot of the stuff that I've been talking about has been either the Nets really in depth earlier today, if you guys missed that, or kind of surface level at all the teams. But the only other team I really want to go fully in depth here on are the Houston Rockets because there's a lot of different angles to kind of evaluate this from and figure out what this means for an immediate sense, what this means in the long term and everything else about this Houston roster this year, next year, the following, continuing on after that. So that's what we're gonna be talking about the Rockets uh, Harden trade overlook today uh, and kind of asking the question, did the Rockets get enough for James Harden? A player that yes, is disgruntled and no longer wanted to be at Houston, but has also been playing at an MVP caliber level for like four straight NBA seasons. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. Quickly before we get started, if you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing, liking the video, checking me out at various socials, all that good stuff. I don't wanna take too long with the intro, I'm excited to go ahead and talk about this and get into this. So the Rockets are getting in the James Harden trade. Most notably, they're getting Oladipo. They're getting four guaranteed picks unprotected. Three from Brooklyn. One technically is Milwaukee's in 2022. And they're getting three, four, four pick swaps from Brooklyn as well. Now, those aren't guaranteed picks. You know, down the road, we have no idea what that's going to look like. But we know that worst case, they got Victor Oladipo and four guaranteed first round picks in exchange for James Harden. Now, Obviously, the situation as a whole was not great for Houston as it relates to trading away Harden. Um, everybody in the league knew that he wanted to be traded. There were only a handful of teams he wanted to go to. And ultimately, there were only a handful of teams that had a trade package that Houston was willing to consider, those being Philadelphia and Brooklyn. And that's what it kind of came down to in the final moments. Now, before it happened, I was thinking that they were going to go out and they were going to get Ben Simmons and they were going to trade James Harden to Philadelphia. And I thought that was the easiest plug and play route. And it seemed like they were trying to push the Sixers for a little bit more. They were trying to get Tyrese Maxey and Matisse Thibel in addition to Ben Simmons. And I honestly thought that Simmons was the most valuable trade piece being offered by far out of anything between Brooklyn and Philly. And I thought that's what would end up happening. However, initially when the trade broke, it was Levert, Exum, Kuruks, and all the picks to Houston for James Harden. I was sitting there looking, I was like, there's no way that's what they got player-wise for James Harden, right? Well, that's because they got Victor Oladipo in exchange for Levert from Indiana. And in an immediate sense, that obviously is a much, much better trade package for them. Levert is younger and should continue to get better, but Victor Oladipo is unquestionably, especially when fully healthy, a significantly better player than Karis Levert. And if he gets back to the former Victor Oladipo, He's an all-NBA caliber guy, and that is a huge you know, plus for this team to get not only someone that can help them now, but also all these future picks. Now, the problem with the Oladipo thing, and the reason why I actually really like what Indiana did here in getting Levert in exchange for Oladipo is the fact that in all likelihood, Oladipo was leaving at the end of the season anyway, so they're basically getting Karis Levert for free. Meanwhile, for Houston, they now have to contend with Victor Oladipo's free agency, and if for some reason it, things just really do not work for them, and, you know, him and John Wall, just they don't fit together. The Christian Wood thing is weird. Victor Oladipo could always leave this offseason. And now the Rockets are looking at all these future picks, which are very nice. Like, I don't want to discount the fact that they have four guaranteed picks, four pick swaps, a Washington pick, a Detroit pick, and a Portland pick. I don't want to discount that. But when you're talking about James Horden, typically players that are teams that screw up these star player trades, they try and get all these different little assets to equal up one big piece, which is James Harden, rather than going and getting the big piece that is supposed to really help them. Case in point, you can go look at all these other star trades throughout NBA history that teams eventually lose. It's because they really didn't get enough actual players. Meanwhile, the New Orleans Pelicans not only got a ton of picks, but they also got Brandon Ingram, who was now an NBA caliber guy at very young, has now signed a rookie max. That's how ideally you want to do these kinds of star trades. There's no Brandon Ingram type young player here for Houston. Now you could argue that that player was never going to be offered, nor was it possible for Harden to, or for Houston to even acquire that player. But still, Oladipo is certainly not that. And he is owed $21 million this year. And in all likelihood, if he continues to play well, will be a max caliber player in the offseason of 2021 with plenty of suitors. Teams like Dallas, teams like uh, Miami, possibly. There are going to be a lot of different teams interested in Victor Oladipo should he decide that he wants to explore his free agency options. And again, considering the, the climate of that 2021 offseason, the amount of cap space av available relative to the limited amount of actually really good players worthy of max contracts, 
Oladipo is probably going to be a max guy this offseason, in my opinion. And if Houston is not considering that and they don't think that they're willing to trade or they're not willing to pay max money to Victor Oladipo and he walks, suddenly you're in a really bad spot. And Oladipo knows this and he knows he can demand a max from Houston and they will be very inclined to give him that max. So in terms of the long term future for Houston, that definitely needs to be considered. Now, for this current Rockets team, it's definitely an interesting group. It's one that is going to struggle spacing-wise in the backcourt initially. There are other players, obviously, on the on the team that can space the floor, Eric Gordon, P.J. Tucker, and otherwise, assuming those guys do not get moved. But Oladipo and Wall specifically, I'm not positive that works super well from a spacing perspective. Oladipo is still trying to get his shot back, and Wall has struggled as a shooter his entire career. From an athleticism and a defense standpoint, if those guys are both locked in, that is an incredible, incredible backcourt. And ideally, they find a way to make it work. Christian Wood continues to be really good. The complimentary guys are good. And they potentially push for a playoff spot this season because there's no reason for them not to because they don't have control over their own pick this offseason. And then they kind of work their magic either via a star trade with these draft picks that they have or start to build towards a future. But my question still remains, did the Rockets get enough for James Harden? And I would argue that they didn't because in my opinion, I would rather have a little bit more on the real, actual young player side of this rather than all these future picks. Because these future picks are, are very, very nice to have, right? But the immediate ones, the 21, the 23 picks from Brooklyn are probably not going to be anything that great in all likelihood, unless these guys bolt in free agency in 2022, are probably not going to be that great. That late Bucks pick is probably not going to be that great. And then you're looking at a 2025 pick that, yes, could be pretty high, but you don't really know. And then the pick swaps could end up being literally nothing. Pick swaps guarantee you absolutely nothing. Now, obviously, when you go back and look at the Billy King trade for the Nets, they ended up being a lot. And if the Nets fall apart in the late 2020s, then yes, those picks are going to be worth a significant amount. But a possibility exists here in which the Rockets just traded away James Harden with Ben Simmons on the table from Philadelphia. They traded away James Harden for Dante Exum, Rodion's Kuruks, and four late first round picks. That is a possibility. If Oladipo leaves, if the Nets and Bucks continue to be good over the next couple of years and those pick swaps don't convey. Now, is that a likely scenario? No, not really. But another scenario exists in which they pay Oladipo in the offseason a huge max contract. He's 29 years old and he declines throughout that contract. It isn't a great one long term. We know he's had injury issues in the past and these picks don't convey in a way that you think that they will, at least not in an ideal way. And again, all you got for Harden is an overpaid Victor Oladipo. Uh, you've got John Wall kind of living around out there on one of the you know bigger contracts in a league. And again, that draft capital does not materialize in anything. So if it was up to me, if the, if the trade packages that were offered were Ben Simmons, Tyrese Maxey in a first, or what they ended up getting from Brooklyn and Houston and Cleveland, I personally would have rather had Ben Simmons if I'm Houston. And I know that it, it's nice to have the shiny toys of the future picks and you can do all these different things with the future picks. But Ben Simmons, like the, the ideal circumstance with all those future picks is to get one guy like Ben Simmons. And you can already have him sign long-term on a contract in his prime right now. And so unless that was taken off the table and that's why they went with the Brooklyn package, I can't imagine why they wouldn't have rather had Simmons if I, if I was Houston here. So we'll get more details as more things come out, but I think it's a question worth asking. I'm interested to see what you guys have to say in the comment section below about whether or not they actually did get enough in exchange for James Harden here in Houston. Maybe Oladipo ends up being awesome. They make the playoffs this year. These future picks are really, really valuable. And they've created not only a good team in an immediate sense, but also a potential future dynasty with all these future picks. That's that's a realistic possibility. I'm willing to admit that. But right now, um, in in the moment, I'm, I'm questioning the value that Houston got in return here. I know it was a tough situation. I know there weren't many teams bidding against each other. But if Ben Simmons and stuff was on the table, I'd rather have Ben Simmons and stuff than a million picks and Victor Oladipo possibly leaving at the end of the year. If Victor Oladipo was signed on a long-term deal for the next three years, making 20 million a year, that's different. Um, and I, I like the fact that they went and got him rather than having just Karis LeVert because I do think that would have been, even though LeVert signed longer term, the, the ceiling of what Oladipo can do for you now as well as in the future is certainly higher than what LeVert can do. But at the end of the day, I think it's just a question worth asking.